Question, uh, Representative Jayapal for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you all very much for being with us today. Uh, blatant moral and ethical violations in the Supreme Court, the highest court in the land, have eroded America's trust in our system. From Justice Clarence Thomas's failure to recuse himself after his wife's questionable January 6th related activities, to lavish private dinners and trips paid for by wealthy donors, the Supreme Court is long overdue for a more ethical code of conduct. And I wanted to focus on how wealthy donors cozy up to justices and influence SCOTUS decisions. Uh, Reverend Shank, it's been reported that you trained your stealth missionaries to get to know the conservative justices at a personal level and support their conservative viewpoints through faith. Did you instruct them to talk to justices in a specific way? What were they trained to say or not say? Uh, thank you, uh, Representative Jayapal. Yes, I did. We had orientations. We told them what would be appropriate, even how to address the justices, and then to find areas of commonality that might establish a rapport. And that proved to be very effective. And were these justices aware that you were seeking to influence or embolden their decision making on the bench, or at least encourage or support more hardline or conservative leaning positions? I'm not certain how to answer that because I, I, I did, you know, I wasn't inside their thinking. Over time, uh, I felt that our presence there became more welcome. And that was just uh, registered by the amount of invitations uh, that they extended to our stealth missionaries for conversation and even visits inside chambers. And can you talk about how um, the messaging, particularly prayers in the company of conservative justices, was shaped as political? Yes. Um, you know, uh, I was trained that prayers should always end with an uncertainty and uh, a submission to the will of God, whatever that may be. On the other hand, there's another kind of prayer that telegraphs a different kind of message when you pray for a specific outcome. Uh, it's not necessarily conversation with the divine anymore. It's a conversation between two persons and of a privileged nature because very few people will interrupt a prayer so you can get through the case you're making in a very effective way. So a wealthy interest group regularly wines and dines the Supreme Court justices for the specific purpose of swaying opinions on landmark cases that will affect millions of Americans. Members of Congress have already requested that the Supreme Court launch an inquiry into these claims. Has the Supreme Court demonstrated any openness to an investigation, Mr. Sherman? Not that I'm aware of. Um, you know, the court has no transparent process for either receiving or investigating complaints or allegations of ethical misconduct, which we have seen both with respect to the Dobbs leak and the allegations made by Reverend Schenck here, uh, which again pales in comparison to the, uh, to the transparency and accountability measures both in the executive branch and, uh, and in Congress. And Professor Fredrickson, why is explicit partisanship concerning when it's demonstrated by members of the judiciary? Um, why do we generally want justices to appear nonpartisan? Is it the same as appearing impartial? I think this is important for the whole country to understand. Oh, both of those are critical elements for the judiciary to be nonpartisan and be impartial. Obviously, unlike members of Congress, um, and the president, they are not elected. They serve uh, under good behavior, which has generally been understood to be for life. Uh, it means that we really do need to have a belief in, in their honesty and their adherence to rule of law. And ultimately, when it comes down to it, we have to remember what Alexander Hamilton said uh, in Federalist 78, which is that the judiciary is the least dangerous branch because it has neither purse nor sword, unlike the executive or the Congress, and that its power is in the public confidence and the faith uh, in their adherence to rule of law. And if they start to lose the public confidence, then we lose our rule of law. 
And in fact, that's already happened. We've seen a historic drop in uh, public confidence. If the American people can't trust the independence of the judiciary of the decisions, the very foundations of our democracy are threatened. And it's why uh, I introduced H.R. 7706, the Judicial Ethics and Anti-Corruption Act, which bans federal judges from owning conflicted assets um, and a number of other things. And I know my time has expired, so Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Thank you.